Dina, thank you very much. Now we are moving from uh, storage to power storage to power generation. Uh, the next talk is from, uh, I believe, from Ben Gurion University. Uh, Yuval Gelbchen will talk about semiconductors based on uh, germanium, tin, lead, uh, tellur and tellurium for thermoelectric power generation. Okay, I will not speak about electrochemistry. Uh, this is another approach for uh, power generation based on uh, thermoelectric effects. And uh, currently in our group we investigate uh, germanium tin lead telluride for uh, such applications. Uh, some background about uh, thermoelectricity. Uh, thermoelectricity deals with the interaction between uh, thermal and electrical uh, phenomena. Uh, the major application uh, these days is the automotive uh, industry. You can see here the BMW car. Uh, BMW were some uh, kind of uh, pioneers in this area uh, for utilizing the waste heat generated in the car's uh, engine uh, in order to electrify uh, several uh, accessory uh, electrical uh, systems in the cars. Uh, usually the conversion uh, unit is based on uh, several uh, thermocouples. Each one is based on uh, uh, N-type, one N-type and one uh, P-type semiconductors. And the voltage obtained on the load resistance is uh, obtained due to the known uh, Seebeck effect, where the electrical voltage is proportional to the temperature uh, drop along the device. This is the hot side and the cold side temperatures. And the proportion coefficient is the Seebeck uh, coefficient, which you all know, uh, which you know uh, obviously, from uh, thermal temperature measurements uh, applications. But uh, for power generation applications, uh, usually we use uh, this expression for the efficiency, which is, uh, as you usually uh, say, a product of uh, Carnot efficiency multiplied by some specific term. And in this uh, specific term, you can see the ZT figure, or uh, the Z figure, which is multiplied by the temperature. And we call it uh, the quality factor, or the thermoelectric uh, figure of merit. Of course, we need the uh, high ZT values for obtaining high efficiencies. Z is defined as the ratio between the square CB coefficient and the product of the thermal conductivity kappa, and the electrical resistivity rho. So you can understand that if we want high efficiencies, we would like to have high Z or ZT values. But uh, this is a very difficult task because uh, usually uh, the CB coefficient and the elect electrical resistivity, because they are both uh, electronic properties of the materials, are correlated. So if you raise the CB, you also raise the electrical resistivity, and it's very difficult to enhance the Z or ZT factor. But uh, one uh, very interesting approach uh, to uh, enhance this uh, Z, uh, ZT value is uh, due to the thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity is usually composed of uh, two contributions, the lattice thermal conductivity and the electronic thermal conductivity. And due to the fact that the phonons, uh, mean free uh, path, is uh, two orders of magnitude, magnitude sorry, lower than that of the electrons, and in, it's in the, in the order of magnitude of uh, 10 by minus 8 meter, which is similar to nanometer. Uh, it means that if we will use some nano patterns uh, for scattering of uh, phonons inside of our materials, we will have a chance to enhance ZT without uh, adversely affecting the electronic properties of the materials. So uh, I'll try to show you uh, briefly what uh, we had managed to do uh, during the past few years, and then I will show you the latest uh, results. We started with uh, the N-type uh, lead telluride-based materials. I would like to, to uh, say just uh, uh, the uh, state-of-the-art ZT values in uh, practical applications these days are in the order of one. It means that if we want to have a much higher efficiencies, we have to increase ZT much beyond the value of one. 
And you can see that uh, while starting with the n-type let we uh, had managed to obtain the zt values in the order of 1.1, uh, which is uh, more than the state of, beyond the state of the art value, and uh, the n-type materials were very good. But at the same time, uh, you know that uh, we need for a thermocouple, we need also p-type materials, not just the n-type. And we started with the lead tin telluride. And uh, you see the blue curves are for undoped materials. You can see for uh, X values of 0 0.1, 0 0.25, and 0 0.5, indicating 10, 25, and 50% of tin. And you can see that the ZT values are much lower compared to the N-type. We also try to dope the materials with indium, and we managed to enhance the ZT up to 0 0.5, but yet it is much lower compared to the N-type materials. Another approach was trying to dope the lead telluride with uh, sodium, which is a known uh, acceptor in these materials. And we managed to increase the ZT furthermore to a value of 0 0.8. But the question is if this is enough, if uh, just enhancing the ZT value uh, will give us the desired uh, goal, and the uh, answer is no. We need also proper mechanical properties, and uh, while seeing the uh, stress-strain curve of the sodium doppler telluride, this blue uh, straight line, you can see that it's uh, pure elastic. It's devoid of any plastic deformation zone, which was observed in the, all of the other compositions, the N-type and the p latin telluride composition. So we concluded at this stage that sodium doppler telluride, although having higher ZT values than the latin telluride, could not be incorporated in practical devices. And at this point, we decided to do something more dramatical in order to enhance our ZT values in the P-type materials. And we decided to move from the lead telluride family of materials toward the germanium telluride family of materials. The only problem of germanium telluride, you can see here the phase diagram, that it's, uh, it contains some uh, phase transition from a low temperature rhomboedral phase to a high temperature cubic phase. And uh, for the automotive applications, we need the uh, hot side temperatures of about 500 degrees centigrade and cold side temperatures of just above room temperature. And you can, you, you can understand that uh, if in pure germanium telluride, this phase transition temperature is, uh, at, uh, 400, is 427 degrees centigrade, it means that we have some intermediate point uh, between the hot side and the cold side of phase transition from, from one structure to the other, which uh, can cause some stability problems. But uh, after further investigation of this rhomboedral uh, low temperature structure, we, you know, rhomboedral structure is that is uh, similar to cubic. It's uh, A equal to B equal to C, but the uh, angle is different from 90 degrees. And while uh, investigating the germanium telluride, we managed to see that this uh, rhomboedral angle is 88.1 degree, which is pretty close to the 90 degrees of the cubic. So we uh, believed at the beginning that uh, maybe it's not a big problem for, from stability point of view, and we decided to further investigate these alloys. First of all, uh, we examined the several uh, lead germanium telluride uh, compositions, and this one in the title here uh, with uh, some uh, additives of bismuth telluride uh, gave us the highest electronic properties. We further uh, investigated the uh, phase transition temperatures from uh, dilatometry uh, to be 373 degrees centigrade, but the most interesting uh, point was this, this uh, high temperature XRD uh, patterns. You know that for rhomboedral uh, phase, uh, there is a two peaks uh, pattern, a doublet pattern, while for cubic phases, there is one single peak pattern. And you can see that while increasing the temperature, this uh, doublet pattern becomes uh, the distance between the, uh, this uh, two peaks becomes closer and closer until getting the single peak of the cubic phase. And it means that we have in this system a second order phase transition. There is no one temperature in which uh, one structure is uh, changed to the other, but this variation is uh, practically uh, continuous, and there is no uh, some uh, fear of uh, instability due to uh, mechanical weakness. Sorry. Okay. You saw the electronic properties, but the main uh, or the most important uh, uh, feature is the ZT. And you can see that we uh, obtained in uh, this uh, particular composition 
a ZT of 1.8, which is far beyond the state of the art. As I told you, the state of the art uh, is one, and we uh, managed to uh, increase uh, this value by uh, almost a factor of two. And the reason for that, besides of the optimal uh, electronic properties, is the thermal conductivity. Uh, you can see here the thermal conductivity for pure germanium telluride. And you can see that while in the uh, introduction of uh, lead telluride, due to this ordering, you can see that the thermal conductivity is decreased. But if you will compare the blue and the, and the purple uh, curves, you see that uh, they have a practical, very similar composition besides the presence of the bismuth telluride in the purple curve. Yet, you can see lower thermal conductivity, and this is due to nanostructuring, which was obtained uh, due to the dispersion of the bismuth telluride particles inside the matrix. In addition, you can see that uh, uh, we found some uh, uh, dislocations, uh, dislocation loops, etc. very interesting uh, crystallograph crystallographic features in the nanoscale. While further investigating the germanium telluride and the late germanium telluride-based alloys, we started with DSC to, in order to uh, evaluate the precise uh, phase transition temperatures for each of the compositions. And we found, you can see here by curve number five, that for germanium tin late telluride, or by introduction also of tin to the system, there is no such phase transition at all. You can see, in addition from the XRD patterns for the germanium telluride and the lead germanium telluride, you can see in all of these XRD patterns, except of the, of the first one on, in the, on the top, you can see the doublet patterns for the rhomboedral phases. But for this composition on the top with the tin telluride, you can see only single peak pattern, which, is, uh, which indicates the cubic nature. But in, in addition, the introduction of tin telluride inside our matrix resulted with some periodic nano and microstructures which we could not uh, explain uh, at the beginning that we saw it. In addition, you can see that these periodic patterns can be in the form of fish bones. We call it a fish bone structure. Again, we found it in the micro and nanoscales, but we could not uh, understand it. Each fish bone was uh, uh, composed from sub uh, nanostructure of uh, 10 nanometers. But as I mentioned several times, we didn't understand the origin for this fish bone structure. And this was until we uh, found the article of Yashina and their uh, collaborators. Uh, it, she published uh, an article in uh, 2006 and showed that in the qua uh, quaternary system of tin telluride, uh, lead telluride, and germanium telluride, there is a spinodal decomposition zone in which the matrix is decomposed to two phases. One is germanium telluride rich, the other is lead telluride rich. But the most interesting part is that the spinodal microstructure is periodic. It's periodic in the nano and in the micro scales. So this is probably the uh, periodic uh, structures that uh, we had uh, seen before. In addition, uh, while doing some line scan uh, analysis to our materials, uh, here it's a backscattered electrons micrograph, so you can understand that the bright zones are the lead telluride rich areas, and the dark matrix is the germanium telluride-rich areas. And you can see that by, while moving from the dark matrix into the white zones, you can see that the variations are continuous. There is no sharp borders like you usually see when you cross some precipitates in your materials. And this is one of the characteristics of the spinodal decomposition. You can see that at the same time that we have a maximum in the lead composition, we have minimum in the germanium composition. So this is the idea uh, that uh, we have in our systems. In addition, we found also some nano, uh, uh, fish bones uh, structures in the nanoscale. It can be attributed to twinning or something, but it should be helpful in reduction of the lattice thermal conductivity, and this is our major goal. Uh, you can see here the fish bone structure by AFM and you can see that uh, the surface of the fish bone is uh, very smooth compared to the rough matrix. We intend to further investigate in the near future the, by nano indentation and so on, the mechanical properties of this uh, fish bone structures as well. In addition, one another uh, characteristic for the spinodal decomposition is the coherent mismatch between the lead rich phase and the germanium rich phase, and you can see it clearly from this slide as well. 
As I mentioned, the most interesting part is the electronic properties and the ZT values, and you can see that for the mostly optimized materials in this system of the spinodal decomposition uh, based alloys, we managed to, ach to achieve ZT, value, uh, ZT maximal values of 1.1. Again, it's beyond the state of the art, and it's a very impressive uh, value for P-type materials. We calcula cal calculated from uh, Fermi-Dirac statistics the lattice uh, thermal conductivities in our materials, and you can see that uh, the higher values were uh, attributed to germanium telluride. Uh, with uh, increasing the lead content, uh, the lattice thermal conductivity was decreased, but you can see that uh, the minimal values are attributed due to the spinodal decomposition nano uh, structures for the germanium tin lead telluride systems. So uh, with that, I want to finish my talk, and I want to acknowledge, you can understand the, uh, that in the f time frame that I had now, uh, I showed you only the major uh, parts of the research, but uh, I want to acknowledge uh, several, uh, we have uh, several uh, uh, co uh, contribution from uh, several uh, uh, fellows, uh, from BGU uh, to Dr. Valodia Ezerski, to Dr. Luisa Meshi, to uh, Dr. Dima Mugliansky, uh, to Albert uh, Jarashnelli, uh, all of them for uh, high resolution SEM, TEM, and XRD. Uh, I want to uh, uh, acknowledge uh, Dr. Itzik Dan and uh, Mr. Yossi Sariel from NRCN from the odd stage XRD. Uh, of course, Ayala uh, Wasserblatt from BGU for the SEM. Uh, I want uh, to acknowledge uh, Professor Nahum Fraga and Dr. Sergei Kalabukhov uh, from the SPS, Park Plasma Centering in BGU, uh, the synthesis. Uh, of course, uh, our colleagues uh, from Italy, uh, Trento, uh, FBK Institute for the AFM, the High Resolution SEM, to all of our students, and to the research gra grants that uh, made this uh, work possible, the ANA in the frame of the FP6 and the BSF. So thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Yaniv, for the presentation. Aaron.